What's up, wizards? This is Planewalker here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the one EQ trick that you absolutely need to know to get even half decent mixes in your production. <laughs> So I want to show you basically like the the thing you're going to have to do with almost every track in your mix if you're going to be mixing properly. And what that is, is cutting the low end out of all of the tracks where it's not necessary. That way you can leave room in the low end for the kick and the bass to really come through. So some people, when they hear about this technique, they're like, why would I want to cut the low end out of all the sounds but the kick and the bass? And the truth is, you know, if you leave the low end in, in all of your tracks, uh, you're just going to have a very, very muddy low end. And you don't want to just attenuate the low end. You actually want to cut it out of any track where it is not absolutely necessary. And, you know, that really is going to mean like most tracks. So... For example, like let's take a look here. I'm going to play back uh, this track for just a quick second. And uh, let's solo this stab sound. If we look at the master channel, I've got a spectrum uh, plug in here. You can, or audio effect. And you can see that even though it may not sound like it initially, there's actually quite a bit of low end in this uh, sound. And in fact, there's so much of it there that it's gonna be just like a, a total, like just muddy mess once we start to add the bass and the kick and all the rest of it. So what you wanna do is you want to grab uh, an EQ plugin, you know, like you could just get, for example, like an EQ8 you don't need a fancy EQ to do this. You can use pretty much any EQ that's built into your DAW. And you want to turn this into a low cut filter. So depending on what type of sound it is, you might just do a standard low cut. I like to do the sharper slope low cut. And generally speaking, you're going to want to cut uh, somewhere between like maybe 200 and 300 hertz for most sounds. Okay, so you can hear the difference there. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stick with that. So now when we play the drums with this sound, then turn it on and off. So you can hear that the bass has been cut out of there. And like I said, it really does leave a lot more room for the actual bass line. You really want to make sure that you're not like crowding the EQ spectrum. So we're going to leave that on. And now let's look at the actual drums here because I want to solo each of the drums that's playing and just look for bass frequencies that are unwanted. So for example, let's check it out in the snare. If we solo the snare, we can check out the master channel. And sure enough, there's definitely some uh, little bit of bass, residual bass in the snare. So let's go ahead and EQ that out as well. In some cases, you'll leave the bass in the snare, but I like to EQ it out unless I really feel like it's necessary. This particular snare doesn't really have much low end, so I'm just going to EQ it out right about there because I don't feel like the rest of it's necessary down there. You can barely even hear it. But the thing is, is that when you've got a ton of tracks all layered on top of each other, all this little bit of bass that's sort of subtle and you don't really hear it at first, 
is actually going to become, uh, they're going to add up, all those frequencies are going to add up and it's just going to muddy up the whole mix. So uh, yeah, so let's keep that on and let's take a look at this hi-hat. All right, so you can even see there's a little bit of bass information way down here. Everything else is kind of gone, so we don't need to do a whole lot to that. Let's just select the hi-hat channel. Uh, let's close it up here and let's get rid of the, all of this information down here. So sometimes you're going to cut way, way more. And let's just get rid of everything that's not necessary. I would say even up all the way up as high as two kilohertz. It, all right, so let's go ahead and, okay. Cool. So now, I mean, you can kind of take this and extrapolate it to all the rest of the tracks. But the important thing is that if you're cutting out all this bass information from all the tracks where it's just not necessary, and like even the vocals, most vocalists, you know, their the fundamental of their singing isn't going to be much above like 200 hertz maybe 150 hertz so you can also cut the uh, bass out of that stuff and that will just give you room to really work on getting the bass it'll give clarity to the bass and the kick mix and if you don't do this like i said your tracks are going to be super muddy it's a super simple technique but a lot of beginning producers miss this they don't realize that you really do need to cut the low end out of everything uh, just about that is not uh, essential for the base information so that's the technique use it wisely so hey if you found that helpful please click that subscribe button that way you don't miss any more of these videos because i'm going to be keeping going with these like i said my plan's about to do around two a week right now as i'm getting this whole beat wizardry thing off the ground. Also make sure you check out the beat wizardry Facebook group. There's a link for it down below and uh, hopefully I'll see you there. Please come in there, ask any questions you need. I'll be creating content based on people's questions in that group. So hope to see you there and uh, hope this was helpful for you.